wonderful things you've shared and you'll have a number of people on here considering whether they might want to go for it or, or considering how they might create the path as a foundation, as you've described, to eventually, as you said, you had it in your head for a period of time and then, then there seemed to be that moment where it made sense. So what advice would you give the folks that are considering it on this call? I think the first advice, and I'm sure that doesn't apply to anybody in this call, but I would, I would just caution you, do this for the right reasons, you know, do it for authenticity. I think we've seen in the past, you hear the terms greenwashing or pinkwashing, where folks, you know, do window dressing or take efforts in a, in a sense to try and fool people that they're actually kind of um, embracing these issues. And I think that if, you know, I would want, I would want caution anybody that heard my explanation about the pie and say, well, this is actually a great way to make more money. So let's go down it for that reason, because I regret to tell you it won't work, right? Because at the, at the foundation of this, this is really with your employees, especially is that, you know, you've got to be authentically committed to it. Uh, and if you're not, they're, they're way too smart and they'll know it. So it's not going to work. I think beyond that, it's, you know, with your eyes wide open. We described this process. It's, a, it's about building a foundation. It is challenging. There's no doubt. It's also immensely rewarding. So I think with your eyes wide open, I'd also say just most importantly, too, is, you know, if you're sitting there and you're thinking, my goodness, I'm like, my, my, I have a younger company or I don't have these resources or I'm, you know, post COVID, I'm just trying to keep my head above water. You know, I don't want to set the idea that, that um, B Corp certification is the only path, right? And the only standard that, you know, to, to access this kind of approach. There are, first of all, there are other certifications out there or there are other measures that you can report out, report out on. Um, that you can look at and whether B Corp's the gold standard or not, it, it is one standard, you know, it's one, it's a rigorous standard we chose to, to pursue, obviously. But secondly, even if you can't meet that standard now or in the immediate future, I wouldn't let that deter you from walking the path and thinking about these issues. And I think, you know, this is a great place, this chapter, you know, which I've been in from the beginning, I think, um, is a great way to get access. I've done, I know, Tara, I've actually participated in some of your webinars, so, you know, to learn a you know, yeah, from your perspective, yeah. which is great because you always <laughs> want to keep learning. Uh, and to hear we, you know, people like um, Kevin Hancock speak and other, other leaders doing this work. And we're all kind of plowing the ground for the first time. Uh, so there's, there's a lot of folks and resources around here to kind of start down the path. So I wouldn't say, well, if I can't do that, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to start down the path. That's probably the biggest thing. And then ask for help, right? That's the other piece. You know, the spirit of what Mascoma did for us is I'm happy to do for others. If you have to have a conversation with a board or a partner, an investor, and you know you want to bounce somebody off, you know bounce it off somebody. You know this is Maine. You know pick up the phone and ask somebody. You know that would be that would be my advice. I would say I will say though coming on the other side of this, not just the certification, but you know I think my experience is deeply fulfilling to me, and what's been reflected back to our by our employees is that um, the certification is another milestone on a journey that is meaningful to them and fulfilling to them to be part of that culture. And there's no better feeling, I think, to be part of a community like this. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you, Neil. So before we turn it over to everyone for questions, one, one last question just to, to help us get future oriented is what's next for Andrew Scoggin Bank? Like, what are you planning as the next thing you're gonna lead the bank through? So I, I think, you know, in the short term, really it's, uh, you know, three things. First, we're, we're looking to make sure that we match again, our commitments with resources. So we're in the, we're in the process of recruiting for a director of corporate um, impact, which I know hopefully you've, folks have seen the link, if not look it up and we're getting some great resumes, but if you know of anyone, please send them our way. And part of the, that person's responsibility will be the next phase of study, you know, helping to set up our B team structure. You know, part of the B Corp philosophy is that you organize your employees into teams to kind of focus on looking at your scores and certain, uh, certain of these pillars and then how you get better. Uh, so that will be one kind of major effort and how we, you know, we incorporate B Corp certification into everything we do. The next thing we'll look at over the course of this year is, you know, we're going to go back and revisit our mission, vision, values. Um, not necessarily light of B Corp, the B Corp changes it, but to say it's just another milestone to say we've been living these for a few years. Do they still resonate? Do they still make sense? Do we have more clarity that we want to incorporate? Uh, we may not change a word. But we found what was really powerful the first time was going through this with all of our employees, this grassroots efforts. We've had a number of folks have joined us. So being able to bring their voices into that and get more clarity about it will be really important. And the third thing we're working about is, is thinking about is like, you know, what is our particular social value proposition or social impact that we want to strive to achieve? And, 
you know, the, the kind of the, the best thought leadership I'm seeing around this is that, you know, try to identify things that are within your wheelhouse and align with your, your business strategy to have the biggest impact. So for example, I have a background in renewable energy. We have some folks in the bank I know that are passionate about that. And we will have a team that's focused on sustainability. We are, you know, working right now to purchase, our, you know, uh, solar energy from a local uh, main solar farm. That's one example. And then beyond what we do in the bank, we'll look to support other organizations doing this work. But we're a bank, right? We're not in the extractive industry of oil and gas, and we don't have things going into, um, you know, waste product going into landfills. So, you know, there's, there's a certain amount of scope and impact that we can have in that arena. Uh, where we can really have an impact in arena is in our wheelhouse, you know, and we serve a lot of folks, but we think we serve business owners, their families and their employees particularly well. We have a deep expertise, they are passionate teams. And so the question for us is, what if we were to focus on serving women and minority business owners, you know, folks that have been historically had difficulty access in the financial system? And what if we can work within our system to find solutions that not only change the system for our bank, but maybe can permeate and have a great impact across the industry? And what would be the impact in our communities if we empower these individuals to grow companies um, within their communities? You know, so things like that is kind of, you know, that's another I, guidance that I'm seeing out there, um, which is more integrated, more sustainable. Um, and the last piece along those lines is looking at our partnerships with community partners. Is there a way that we can pioneer a new model there to go beyond the, the big photo, big check and photograph, you know, to, and beyond just sitting on a board to bring our talents, abilities, energy, and creativity to some of these partners to actually help them move the needle on their mission. So that's the kind of work that's ahead of us. And then of course, just, you know, the day-to-day -day job of, you know, taking great care of, uh, you know, our clients. Um, and then I'm sure as we go into do all the work I just described, you know, the next milestones or the next achievements will become clear for us. Well, that's certainly plenty <laughs> to, to share in addition to keeping the lights on. And it, you reminded me because you and I didn't get to talk about this, Neil, because I forgot about this overlap that Prosperity Maine, an organization that is um, working to empower immigrants to be successful in our community, you are, Andrew Scott and Bank is working closely on one of the initiatives that you talked about um, in Lewiston. And so it's an example of like, you're really, authentically, genuinely doing this work. So to your point of like, not wanting to do it just for the sake of, you know, being a part of a club or getting some kind of certification, like the ongoing work that it requires to, to really do the meaningful work to get, continue to get recertified and continue to um, work with the community to demonstrate your genuine authenticity in, in um, being this type of organization is cl clear. Uh, among a number of different facets. So thank you so much for doing all that work in the community. Well, well thank you, Chad. But I would point out that's a great example is that, you know, for this is about having an impact in the world. And if you want to have the biggest impact, you have to collaborate, right? It's a network effect, right? And the companies like Prosper, I mean, sorry, organizations like Prosperity Maine, which are just so impressive on so many levels. So, you know, for us to kind of, you know, to, to, to look, speak with them, engage them, um, get their guidance and say, how do we work together to have a bigger impact? And then hopefully, you know, eventually leverage other, you know, other relationships, other businesses, perhaps in our circle of influence who, who don't have the infrastructure that we do, they don't have a director of corporate impact, but say like, we'd like to piggyback on your network and to get involved with some of these companies. That would be the next level for us. How do we bring in other folks, some of the consultants to say, hey, listen, would you meet with some of these companies? You know, we, we'll maybe be able to do some financing, but can you give some consulting? Uh, that's a really exciting piece.